Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This is my top 10 stocks as we head into Monday, March 11th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. And also, if you're into Bitcoin, I will do that chart at the very end. So stick around for that. First off, a couple of clarifications. Number one, the candlestick that you see right there will be moving around. That is because the market's still open for a small amount of time. But I like to do these videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And then second, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So ticker number one, PBM, very nice mover today. And now we have a pretty interesting situation because yeah, there's no doubt about it that essentially all day long, after the early morning, there's been a, a pretty well-defined trend line that has you know, been put in a play right there, representing the pullback that has taken place. But within this grand scheme of things, yes, there has been a pullback that's taken place, but you have to, assuming you care about the bigger picture point of view, so let me take a step back. If you're some sort of day trader, flipper, scalper, whatever you want to call yourself, and you bought right there and your plan was to buy and sell within seven minutes, well then yes, from that perspective, the chart looks really bad. But if you care about the bigger picture, then you still have... Let me zoom out here a little bit. You still have a situation where this thing's been put in higher lows and is still in an overall uptrend. And from a pattern standpoint, I'll just kind of crudely draw this in. Big move up right there. What we have here, let me make it more visual, put the golf hole down here. We have a bull pennant pattern. Again, if you're some sort of day trader that bought up here, yeah, you probably don't care about the bull pennant pattern. So that's why I'm trying to distinguish between people that care about more so a bigger picture versus people that are very narrow time minded, you know, such as a day trader. But all things considered, that's kind of my long way of saying, I think a lot of people are gonna be watching that tread line right there. And when a lot of people are watching the same levels, wondering the same thing, call it a self-filling prophecy, call it whatever you want. It can produce some dynamic movement. So no guarantees, but is it plausible that if the price comes up here, and break through that trend line, that that break in of itself could create additional buying pressure. That is certainly plausible. So if you like this price range down below $5, definitely keep an eye on it. Next one, next one, SOXS. And there's no doubt about it. I'll say it the obvious from where it was when it started off to where it eventually went. Very, very nice bounce, but that does lead to the more than valid question. But is there any sort of genuine power behind this bounce or is this just some sort of dead cat bounce knee jerk reaction? And I have no idea, but by using charts, we can make answering that question very straightforward. And in my mind, it's all about this area right down here at $2.95. Why is two ninety-five dollars important? And I'm not saying this will occur, but just for example's sake, if the price were to come down here and then just continue on down, what would you have at that point? You would quite literally have the price having gone right back to where it was. And I mean, not to insult your intelligence, but price movements that make a very nice move and then go right back to where they started, not exactly a sign of genuine power. But to be fair, nothing can go straight up. So maybe the price comes down here, the difference being consolidates out and then starts to curl back upwards. Now, all of a sudden, what would you have? Well, you'd have a set of lows right there. You'd have lows right there. And if you envision those as stair steps, you'd still have stair steps progressing the upward direction. And that's what it's all about. Truly strong moves are not gonna go straight up, but they are gonna show signs of progress. And in this situation, the quote unquote sign of progress is being staying up above right around that 295-ish area. So no doubt about it, big bounce today. Is there true power behind it? Let's see if it can make some progress. Next one here, AMD. And this is again, another one of these kind of tricky situations because it's all about perspective. Day trader scalpers, anybody that was buying up here looking to buy and sell very quickly, they are not having a good day at all because yes, an absolute massive move to the downside. With that being said, if you care about the big picture point of view, let's zoom out, you can see that very clearly the upwards trend is still very much so in the upwards direction. Again, day traders buying right there, not so happy. But if you care about the overall trend, everything is hanging in there. So yeah, there's no doubt about it. Nasty move here. A lot of downwards pressure did show up, but within the grand scheme of it all, the price is still hanging in there. And what I'm curious about moving forward now, whoops, let's try that in. there we go. Is this area right here as a trend line? So let me change that to green to represent support and then squeeze that out. And you can see right here that that level has done a pretty interesting job of doing a good job of forecasting areas of support, including from where it was today. So in the very near term, I'd say keep an eye on that and that if the price can stay above there, that's certainly gonna be a best case scenario. If the price doesn't hold above there, then I could definitely see a bigger pullback continuing with the price potentially even headed down there to that pink line down there, the 200 period moving average. But yes, all things considered, Brutal day today, but think about that word today. Looking at multiple days as we're doing here, you can see the overall trend is still bullish. Next one, RIVN, really came to life on Thursday. And then today, uh, you know, continued with the volume and the movement. Bit of a pullback here, but uh, which has been the theme so far. Overall, things are just fine, assuming you're not some sort of day trader that was buying right there. Now, in the very near term, the level that I think is pretty interesting from a resistance standpoint 
going to be right there at that area at $13. You can see that's essentially been the top part of this consolidation right here. So made the big move, then a, a pretty nasty pullback here, but came down there and bounced very nicely off that pink line, which is the 200 period moving average. So moving forward, that would be the ideal level of support meaning for say clay. What make this chart look the absolute healthiest moving forward? Definitely if the price can stay above that 200 period moving average. From the overarching standpoint, just watch out purple line down there, 50 period moving average as the name implies, that line's gonna move itself higher and higher, which is essentially like a trend line that's gonna draw itself for you. So as long as the price stays above that uptrending trend line, then the overall uh, you know, trend is still plenty bullish. But yeah, in the near term, I think a good high volume break, key dynamic there being a high volume break of $13, has a very good chance of sending it up to these previous highs, if not even breaking up above it. But we'll see if the price can get that high volume break of 13 or not. Next one, AMC, and just a, a very brutal day. Not necessarily because it was such a red day, but because the price has been had been doing a fantastic job of building higher lows. I mean, you look at that low, then that low got higher, that low got higher, that low got higher. These lows were higher, but then today price came down, broke that low right there, broke the 50 period moving average, and you can see has just continued to bleed and bleed and bleed. So that trend has been broken, and now it's, it's not like it's gone down to new lows or anything like that, but yeah, as far as you know, the, the nice looking trend that was being formed, uh, that has been wiped away. And now the key dynamic, at least in my opinion, moving forward, going to definitely be right down there around $4.20 as a key area of support. Uh, let me squeeze things down so you can see that a little bit better. But you can see through the history of things, acted as support, support a bunch of times right there, support right there. So if the price were to come down to 420 and then break down through there, now all of a sudden you're basically putting the price down at the all-time lows, which from a bullish standpoint, obviously that's not where you want to go. But yeah, overall today, very brutal day, but all lies is going to be on $4.20 next week. So we'll see if the bulls can step up and hold that position or not. Real quick, I want to take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for my free live online webinar that I'm offering next week. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk, then definitely get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box. Or if you're watching at my website, there's an area right there on the page you can click to get signed up. So like I said, if you've been enjoying, then certainly get signed up for the free webinar. Next one, M-A-R-A, -A, and started off today very strong, then had a pullback. So within the bigger picture, nothing really happened. What do I mean within the bigger picture? Well, looking at the past several days, I've been talking about the price being stuck inside of this channel. And yeah, kind of a brutal move, false breakout to the upside, and then move back in. But you can see the price is, well, once again, right inside of that channel. So it's really just a matter of, uh, you know, kind of how you're viewing things. But assuming you've cared about the past kind of uh, several days, then I'm sure you've been watching that channel. And yeah. Uh, after the temporary fake breakout, the price is still stuck inside that channel. Top of the channel there being $24, bottom of the channel down there being right around $21.70. Now in the you know bigger picture, yes, if there's a breakout to the upside, you'll want to watch that pink line there, 200 period moving average. Uh, but um, you know not a whole lot of new things to say other than just noting that, yeah, brutal move. That, well, I guess if you bought right here and you scalped out as a day trader, that was not a brutal move. You really enjoy that. But if you're buying right there on the breakout and expecting a whole lot more, well, then you were disappointed um, as it you know rolled back over. But overall, the price is still stuck in that sideways channel. Next one, TSLA, Tesla. And this morning got off to a good start, was trying to break out. I mean, had a good solid move on Thursday as the price worked itself up, continued, and then this morning just completely fell downwards. Now to give some credit where credit's due, it is hanging on very strongly down right at this area of support. You can see generally speaking, support, support, and then right here, support. Although you can see that it actually formed a little bit of a support slightly above that area. But I, and you could definitely call that an area of support. And if you wanted to annotate that out in your chart, I would not argue against that at all. But I'm just gonna try to keep this as clean as possible because in my opinion, everybody and their brother's uncle is now gonna be watching 173.50 going into next week because that is what I think is gonna be the main area of support that a lot of people are watching. Because again, you had that one bounce there, then you had another bounce right there. So the question becomes, if the price comes back down there, will it be some sort of triple bottom or is it gonna be a break that opens up another round of floodgates to the downside? Both of those are very valid opinions. That's why risk management matters because somebody's gonna be right, somebody's gonna be wrong. Uh, and I, to, to be fair, I mean, it's not like the price is for sure gonna go down to 173.50, but if it does, you're gonna have a lot of people watching and caring about what happens. Next one here, AMLX, brutal, brutal gap down, which is why it, it kind of looks like it's in the middle of nowhere because it is. If I squeeze this back in, you can see that. Yeah, the price was all the way up here before the big gap down here. So I'm just doing this to make it a little bit easier to see here from a chart standpoint. But the same general idea uh, that I talked about on a previous one was down here, nice little bounce up here. So is this the start of a bigger bounce? Is there some genuine power behind this movement? 
Well, it goes back to that whole talking point of, well, let's see if it can make some progress. So how am I defining progress? Right there at $3.10. So as I talked about on that other one, if the price can consolidate out and then curl back upwards, as far as where the lows are at, well, you'd have a low right here. You'd have that low down there. If you envision those as stair steps, then you would have stair steps progressing in the upwards direction. So yes, no doubt about it. Nice bounce. Is it genuinely strong? Is there a true momentum here? Let's see if it can make progress by staying above 310. In terms of areas of resistance, main battleground to watch, in my opinion, before you get too excited about anything else, be right up there at about $3.85. And high volume break of 385, I think, you know, gives it a good chance of going up there and retesting those highs right there. Uh, but so far, so good. Nice little bounce, consolidating on much more lower volume. So can the volume return and push it up through 385? Let's see what happens early next week. Next, A-I-R-E, and have ourselves a good solid pattern here that you got to think of several people have probably drawn into play. So you have that talking point of self-fulfilling prophecies where a lot of people are watching the same things, wondering the same things. So let me get these levels mapped out. So there is our resistance, there is our support, and then maybe make it easier to see. Let's keep it all one color. So we have our resistance, we have our support, we have the big upwards move here. So what would this would be called a bull flag pattern and nothing guaranteed, as I said, but is it plausible that if the price comes up here and breaks through that area, that that break in and of itself creates additional buying pressure, that is certainly valid. So if you like stocks down below $5, you like bull flags, keep an eye on it. Next one, TQQQ, which is an ETF that measures the NASDAQ market. So if you believe the NASDAQ market as a whole is gonna rise, this one will also rise and very popular ETF and brutal move today. I mean, it came up, started off the day strong, broke through that key level of resistance that I talked about previously up there at 63.50, acted like it wanted to be all strong. And then, yeah, you know the rest of the story. This is why stop losses uh, need to exist because you know there are some people out there that got undisciplined and they got roasted. They're not gonna be having a good weekend. So just a brutal fake breakout right there as it's come back down. And now, in my opinion at least, all eyes have shifted to the pink line, which you now know is that very famous 200 period moving average. And a lot of people are gonna be questioning, can the price at least maintain above there? If it does not maintain above there, especially if it's a high volume break to the downside, then I think it's more than realistic to think that the bears at least press it down to the previous lows down here at the $58 mark, which you can see the price you know, found some support right there. So in my mind, that, that's gonna be the main dynamic and most interesting dynamic is first off keeping on that purple, or excuse me, the pink line, the 200 period moving average, and if that doesn't quite hold up, then definitely watching $58 because you got to think there's going to be all sorts of people watching those levels, which once again introduces that whole idea of those self-fulfilling prophecies. If there is any sort of bounce, yeah, you still have 6350 up there. But in more of the near term, I think an interesting level to get and play there is that downtrending trend line right there. But yeah, no doubt about it. Very, very brutal day to day. A lot of downward selling pressure, but does it continue into next week? We'll see what happens. So that wraps up the top 10 stocks and I'll get to Bitcoin here in just a second. But for you stock traders out there, definitely go get signed up for that free webinar next week. It'll be Thursday, March 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. Now let's get on to Bitcoin. So here we are looking at Bitcoin and one quick little clarification. We are now looking at the four hour time frame. So no longer the 30 minute time frame. Each one of these candlesticks represents an entire four hours. And as I speak right now, we're in a very, very interesting scenario because the price you can see right here previously made another surge up, actually broke to new highs, but unfortunately got beat back. To, I, I, maybe not unfortunately, if you were short, then I'm sure you enjoyed that move there, but it did get knocked back down. However, as I speak right now, headed into the weekend, you can see that the price is actually up above that 69,050 mark. And now the question mark moving into the weekend is okay. Is this breakout gonna continue on up? And the bigger question is all about, all right, let's see if the price can get up there and push through those highs right there. And if it does that, it's at all time highs and who knows what sort of momentum might pick up over the weekend, uh, you know, as things continue to play out. As far as supports are concerned, if there is any sort of pullback, really nothing new here to report from the past videos I've done. As of right now, just continue to watch that purple line there, 50 period moving average, but very, very interesting dynamic. I, I wish it was uh, several hours from now so we could see a little bit more of what actually happens with this movement, uh, but we do know that it tried, got rejected, now it is trying again. So on this try, will it break through? Grab your popcorn, grab your Sour Patch Kids and keep an eye on it this weekend. So one final time, even if you trade Bitcoin and crypto, what you'll learn about in the free webinar is still completely uh, applicable to what you could be doing. So definitely get signed up next week, Thursday, March 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you enjoy these live trade videos, or not, this is not a live trade video. Good thing it's Friday. But if you enjoy these top 10 videos, uh, then hit that like button, leave a comment below. And I do offer a live trade video. So I have a playlist of me trading live. So I'll turn that into a quick plug. Go check out those playlists too. Get signed up for that free class. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.